Hi, it's Sherry from Sherry DePaulo Art, and I'm back today for another creative video for the Sean Petit Creative Team. And today, I am going to show you how I created a beautiful floral arrangement mixed with regular everyday flowers and Christmas poinsettias. And I want to show you what the final piece will look like. So here is the final piece. This is a 24 by 12 inch canvas and I created it to look like wood, so like a wood slat look, which is really in right now. I added poinsettias and then some other flowers, just everyday flowers. I added some paper for collage effect. I picked these colors because I felt like they could be Christmas, even though I didn't all have all Christmas flowers. So I made the other flowers in shades of yellows and pinks, magentas and white. And I did add a dash of gold and of course all the white speckles all around, which I feel like give it a magical feel. To get started, I put gesso down with my brayer on top of my vintage Christmas music paper. Then I took a piece of wax paper, put the gesso on the wax paper, and then used it like a stamp throughout the canvas to give it texture. I then got my Americano Deco Art Paint Asphaltum and I mixed it with my golden acrylic glazing liquid gloss to make a glazing liquid that I'm going to apply over top of the canvas to give it a texture and look of being wood. To get this look, you just take your paintbrush and you spread the glazing medium that you just created all over your canvas. You can add a little bit of water to help move it along a little easier, which is what I did, and then you leave it sit for a short period of time, about 30 seconds or so, and then you wipe it off. I wipe the glazing mixture off with a clean, wet baby wipe, and I use clean spots on the baby wipe throughout and get new baby wipes throughout in order to pull the paint up instead of just spreading it around. Then I took the glazing medium and applied it again to the canvas to give it a little bit more color and did the same process. Here you can see that it really does look like wood slats instead of a canvas. And I got that look because of the texture and then I used a metal ruler and black golden paint. You can use any kind of paint, put it on the edge of the ruler, and then just basically stamped it along the canvas to make it look like slats. For the focal point of this canvas, I wanted to create a bowl with flowers. And so I cut out this piece of patterned paper and I decided to use my archival ink to edge out, to ink out the edges so that this piece would pop and stand out on the canvas. Then I took it and after I was done doing the edges, I crinkled it up and put some wrinkles in it and then took the ink and applied it over top of all of the creases and the wrinkles and that picked up all of those areas and gave it much more texture. I pulled out my Mod Podge because that's my favorite adhesive and I put Mod Podge on the back of the bowl paper and then again on the canvas so that it was nice and saturated and laid down that piece. I wanted to center it so I kind of eyeballed it and then decided to get my ruler out, measured it, and made sure that it was even in the center of the canvas. I'm using two stencils for the leaves, the Sean Petit in the garden stencil. And then I went into my stash and pulled out another one because I wanted to use a larger leaf but I'm sure if you go to Sean Petit's store, she'll have stencils that will be able to work really well for this project. I'm also using the Chromium Oxide Green Golden Acrylics Green to stencil my leaves, and I'm using Golden Green Gold and Liquitex Basics Light Yellow Brilliant Green. Basically what I do is I put them on my palette, as you can see in this video, and I go between them and mix them up and kind of dab them on so that there's some variation in the greens that go on the stencil. By mixing up the three greens that I have, 
when I stencil and you can see that when I'm pouncing the makeup sponge I'm pouncing into all the colors so there's a lot of variation and a lot of texture and depth that goes into each stencil. I now pulled out my Liquitex Basics Light Olive Green paint. It's a new color that I picked up. I really like it. And I'm using those lighter colors for some of these smaller leaves on the Sean Petit in the garden stencil. And I'm really not thinking a whole lot about the placement of these leaves except that when I placed the leaves, I did the larger ones first on the edges. And then I intermixed some of these smaller leaf sets from Sean's stencil and I mixed a lot of the color and I used more of a lighter color than the bigger leaves. Then I went back to the bigger leaves, used some of the more darker colors and filled in more because when you look at an arrangement you'll see a lot of greenery in the background and these larger leaves make, they cover up more, more real estate on the canvas so they fill it in better. So by placing those in there first, then I know where I need to put the smaller leaves, which is what I'm doing now. Just kind of adding them in randomly, filling in the spots. You can also see that I'm using the entire leaf section on the stencils until I get to about this point where I'm just kind of flipping the stencil around and just kind of dabbing it and kind of adding that green. That allows the canvas to get filled with the green in the background. For my first red for the poinsettias, I'm using Alzirin Crimson Hue by Liquitex Basics. I'm also using primary red, a Deco Arts tomato red, and the cadmium red deep hue. These four colors will be used to stencil in the poinsettias for this project. I'm using the poinsettia stencil from Sean Petit and I'm going to put the stencil down with the four red paints that I chose. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to pounce out three of the, the poinsettia stencils and I'm going to go back and forth between the, the different reds that I have on, the, on my paper plate palette. And here I'm doing the second one and I'm using the same stencil it's the full, larger poinsettia stencil. And again, I'm doing it for the third time because working in odd numbers is the best way for your eye to travel around the piece. And you also see that they're in the form of a triangle as well. Here I'm adding additional poinsettias from the poinsettia and leaves stencil. I'm adding the smaller sizes and some of the sizes that are um, in a different direction to add the look overall look to this piece. I pulled up my Sean Petit Vintage Wallpaper 1 stencil and I'm using the various flowers within there to add a different look to this piece so that it's not just poinsettias because my feeling is that in, a, in an arrangement of poinsettias I think it would be beautiful to have different kinds of flowers intermixed with it as well. I then decided to use white gesso to highlight these flowers. So what I did was I pulled the stencil, I used the gesso, deciding where I wanted these flowers to be, and then I stenciled them accordingly. Watch and see how I've minimized this part of the stencil by only stenciling in the, the middle part of it. And that gave me the same look, but a smaller flower.
I have chosen to go over these white flowers with my primary red Liquitex paint. And I got this really cool effect that I was not expecting. I lined up the stencil in exactly the same spot so if I thought that I had done with the gesso. And after adding in that primary red and a little bit of the other colors, you can see how I got this shadowy look with the white and I loved it. I thought it was so pretty. I just love the way these flowers turned out. I think it is so cool looking. I got my Liquitex Basics Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue because I want to do the centers of the poinsettias. So what I decided to do was put my gesso down first, just used a small brush and sort of dabbed it in there to cover up what was underneath because the yellow would be too see-through. I'd be able to see through to the bottom or to what's underneath it. So I took the gesso, filled that all in so that then I can go back with my yellows and then I also got yellow oxide and between those two colors I mixed them just like I did when I did my flowers, when I did my leaves. I go back and forth and kind of um, just you know do a little bit of one color a little bit of another and kind of mix them as I go and I feel like that gives it a lot of a lot of depth and a lot of interest and makes it a little bit more realistic looking and then I went and had my fine liner applicator that has my white golden fluid acrylic paint mixed with water it makes it real loose so that it comes out real wet and real flowy and added that in there as with the in the centers then I took my brush and went back with my reds and sort of started to highlight each of the petals I added more uh, darker colors I added some white to give it some shading and to kind of bring that that darkness down a, a bit and make it look more realistic about you know where the darker parts and the lighter parts of each petal would be I got my black G2 Pilot Pen, which is my favorite pen for doing line work. And I went out and started to do the line work over top of the leaves to sort of define them and add the veining in the centers of each of the leaves. I got my iridescent bright gold fine, which is one of my favorite colors that Golden makes, and my cadmium yellow deep hue. And between the two of them, I used another stencil that I had because I wanted a little bit of a different kind of flower. And if you shop at Sean Petit, you'll be able to find plenty of stencils that you can use in the same manner. I took my white gesso and I applied the first layer of each stencil in some spaces that I wanted and I had decided that I wanted these flowers to be the yellow gold colors because I felt like there was like the pinker color and the deeper red color and so now this this gold yellow color is really going to bring the whole bouquet the whole uh, centerpiece of flowers together so again, I use my brush and I'm dipping in both of the yellow colors and I am just kind of applying that color down over top of the white. Instead of putting the stencil down again and then stenciling it, I used a brush this time because I wanted to be a little bit more 
focused as to what I was doing. Here I am using the hard end of the brush and I'm scratching out that paint that's in between each of the petals that gives the flower the dimension that I want so that it doesn't just look like a big blob. Here I'm using my black Stabilo, Stabilo pencil to outline the petals on the poinsettias and then I'm using my fingers to kind of blend it in and give it some shading and I do this effect because it really defines each of the petals and instead of using a pen I'm using this so that I can get that shading look. I got the Sean Petit Magnolia stencil because I love the shape of these flowers and I thought they'd be perfect. And I got my gesso out because I wanted to use the gesso as the base color for these flowers. Then what happened was when I was stenciling, a lot of the gesso kind of got under the stencil and took away some of that line work that's in the stencil, which I love. So I took the back, the hard part of my, the other end of my brush, the wooden part, and went through and dragged through where the lines were that were covered and took that paint out to give it that dimension and show the depth of each of the flowers. I then took my white gesso and my brush and gave it a second and a third coat over top of the white flowers so that they would be a pure white color to start with. I got my favorite Castell Pitt Artist Pen Cold Gray 3, the large big brush pens, and the ivory. And I use these to shade the magnolia flowers that I have on the piece. What I really liked about the, the ivory color, it's kind of like a real, real, real light yellow. And when, it, when I put it over top of the white paint, it really um, stood out in a nice, nice, perfect way. It wasn't too much or too little. I used my finger to blend it in, and then I got my cold gray, and I drew, drew over top of the, the lines that came with the stencils, the ones that I dragged my brush through, and just used my finger to blend them in to create the depth and the more um, dimensional look of each of the magnolias. I got my Stabilo black pencil and outlined those lines again where I used the cold gray and my finger to blend them in because I wanted it to make it be more prominent. Then I got my yellow, cadmium yellow hue and added some darker yellow into the areas where I had the ivory pen because I just kind of wanted some of it to sort of stand out and then I took again the white gesso that was on my palette and um, kind of blended it in a little bit brought back that brightness a little I then outlined the magnolia and then I thought you know what I don't really like it so I got my wipe to wipe it out and then look I made a total mess and I left it in here just to show you that it, I was able to wipe it all off the whole entire thing and start over again. I then decided to use my G2 Pilot Pen to do my line work that I typically do on one of my art pieces. And I think I, I like that look a lot better. And then I went back in again and alternated between the ivory and the cold gray, pit artist pens, adding shading and blending it with my finger until I liked the final outcome of the flowers. Up my fine line applicator fine tip which has my titanium white mixed with a little bit of water in it and I love this tool I recommend it highly you can get it on Amazon I use it to get fine details in all of my art pieces I now have my stays on ink saddle brown and I'm using it along the edges of my canvas which is something that I do quite 
quite often and I'm also kind of spreading it a little bit on the canvas itself and picking up all that texture. I have my raw sienna acrylic paint that I'm going to use to paint out the edges of the canvas. I added pattern paper to the acrylic poinsettia so that I could give it a collage look and a mixed media effect. I got my Saddle Brown stays on ink to add it to the sides and give it some dimension. I then got my Pitt Artist Pens, my big brushes. I got some red and some yellow ochre and went through and just sort of added a little bit of color to all of those pattern paper pieces that I added and did the same with the yellow ochre to give some different texture and warmth to the piece. The last thing I did was pulled out my rub-ons that I've collected from my scrapbooking days and settled on a design that I really like to put at the bottom of the vase. It was a swirl and then I applied it with my rub-on tool. I added the word believe which I think complements the piece perfectly and I love how it fit really nicely on the vase of this art piece. I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you continue to watch. I ask that you follow Sean Petit's YouTube channel and that you go over to my YouTube channel and follow as well. And thank you for watching and I'll see you again in 2020 with some more videos to finish out the year.